Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm starting this video in the 3D printing room, which has got three 3D printers running. I've got the Lolzbot AO101 just there, the Lolzbot Taz 3, and the Lolzbot Taz 4, which is knocking out some more parts for R2D2. So this is the third part of my entirely 3D printed R2D2 project. I've got the frame here that we did last time, and we've got as far as putting on one of these plates, which is the hub for the shoulder, for the legs, confusingly. Obviously shoulders don't belong on legs. Um, the, the other one still isn't printed, but today we're gonna to be working on making the rest of the mechanical parts to hopefully motorize the shoulders for the legs. And that's what's currently printing on the TAS 4 behind me. So let's have a look at some CAD. The design has moved on uh, rather a lot since the last part here, so the pieces we printed are these green and purple pieces, obviously they're all printed in white ABS. So that makes up the plate which um, effectively fits between the top two rings and holds two bearings. And I'm using these Lazy Susan bearings which aren't great vertically, they really want to be pressed down against the table with a turntable on top of them. So I'm using a pair of them which are actually going to be compressed together with studding, which is threaded bar. Um, tightened up with nuts so it actually pulls them together so as far as the bearings are concerned they think that they're flat on the table with a weight on top of them. On the outside we've got these red parts which are basically they're going to be um, printed and acetone welded together. I've done them in two halves so the prints aren't too high and they don't warp when they're printing. So essentially this makes up one hub which holds the legs on. Now you can see we've got these sort of a curve shaped grooves in those parts and in the plate part. And so basically we've got a studding that's fixed on the plate and some that's fixed on the hubs which rotate through those slots. And that means that we only move the leg to 36 degrees and we've got end stops for when the droid is standing upright on two legs and when the legs slanted to 32 degrees when it's in three leg mode. Um, and since last time I've cut these big chunks out, the four big holes I've cut out in each of the, in fact, red and blue parts to save filament and uh, help stop warping so there's not much, so much pressure built up across the layers as the part is built up. So both those red parts get printed flat on the bed and acetone welded together. And then on the outside of that, the leg is attached. Uh, on the inside, we've got these two blue parts, which again are printed and then they're acetone welded together. So there's a recess um, in the bottom of one of these and it's the same with the top of the red part there for the nut head so they don't bind on the part. But essentially we're going to be sticking these face together on the um, top face there. So that's going to be acetone welded together as well. And the internal hubs here you'll notice have this other recess around the edge. So they have um, this slightly recessed part on each one um, and that allows us to turn this into a pulley which is actually going to be driven by a motor. So I mentioned last time that some people use linear actuators to drive their legs to convert into two leg mode and back into three leg mode which means that this hub would have a lever sticking out so a linear actuator would run vertically within the droid. I'm actually going to try and print a Ninja Flex drive belt to start with and turn that with a motor. So um, basically these two blue hubs get printed stuck together face to face and that gives us a pulley. Now the pulley only turns 36 degrees, so we don't actually need any teeth on this. We can constrain the belt and tension it around this pulley. Um, and that's what the um, eight screw holes are that go in through its circumference on each one. So when these are face to face, those will be pilot holes, which means I can attach a clamp or clamps wherever I need them. Now I mentioned that the bearings are getting compressed together. So um, I wasn't really convinced that I needed to do those up with bolts against the plastic. So I've got this one additional part, which is another hub with the same cuts in, and the black part is a Ninja Flex gasket. So that will actually be applying tension between the two bearings. So there's going to be a bit of cushioning there, and we can tighten it up, and it's going to be a bit more forgiving than if it were just rigid plastic bolted against rigid plastic. So um, as I said, we're already printing those parts. So we'll get all the parts printed off, get them welded together, and hopefully we should be able to assemble this into a really stable shoulder hub. Here are the first two parts, which are for the outer hub, which attaches onto the actual leg. So uh, we've got one part here, it's got recess here for the nut heads for the stationary bars that go through, and the other one doesn't, which is the part for the outside. 
So we need to get these face to face on the parts that were flat down on the print bed. And we need to stick those together and make sure they're perfectly aligned so that those holes go all the way through perfectly. Otherwise our droid won't rest at 36 degrees properly. So we're going to use acetone to weld this together as with the previous parts, which makes a chemical weld. So this is ABS plastic, which is what Lego is made from. It dissolves in acetone. So I've got my dirty pot of acetone and I've also got my um, ABS dissolved in acetone to make a paste to fill in any gaps, which you won't need very much of. So we're going to stick that together and then we're going to clamp it up and then we're going to do the same for the inner hub and then hopefully we can get some studding in and get it mounted. So I'm going to spread some acetone on both halves as I did before, just coating it. And a bit of this gunk just around the middle where the actual um, the parts get bolted together to avoid the holes, but I may need to stick a file in there later. Alright, let's stick those together and hopefully we can align them perfectly. See the other holes help quite a lot. And we'll stick some clamps on. I've done my 5mm absolutely solid infill ABS gasket plate and I'm doing the Ninja Flex part that sits behind it. So we should have all the parts together then and we can bolt it all together. Here are all the hub parts. So here are the two parts I just showed you, my Ninja Flex gasket and my white solid um, gasket plate. Um, and now I've got the um, hubs here sorted out with the bearings on. So this is the inside hub, that's the pulley, and that's got its bearing fixed on the inside. This is the outside one, which I've attached some studding to. So those are the two parts welded together. And I've got my bearing on the inside there. So what you'll notice is these bearings are really rattly, which means it's going to be the noisiest droid on earth as it goes over a textured surface. Um, but I've mentioned I'm going to clamp these together, of course, using these bits of studding. So if we actually compress the bearings, it's quite a lot better. So that's how we're going to get rid of the noise, hopefully. So let's see where that fits. So on my droid itself, on this plate, I've put these two fixed bits of studding. And these are the pieces that will eventually make the parallelogram for the leg. So they'll have runners that go all the way down with bearings fixed on these. So... This piece here now, with its um, three bits of studding, fits quite neatly into these holes. So this goes like so. Let's just align that and we need to make sure that that Lazy Susan bearing goes into the recess. But we can screw that in the corners by turning this. Um, and obviously what we can see is now that this, um, this leg will only turn to 36 degrees. And if we have a look on the inside, We can hopefully see, let's just take this top ring off, that might make it a bit easier, that we've got similar cutouts for these turning bits of studding to do the same thing. So uh, the next piece that goes on is the internal bearing, which again has the same holes in it. So that will fit on, see that that aligns. And again, that uh, bearing, I can turn these to get to the screw holes to screw this onto the plate there. Um, and then that is followed by the Ninja Flex piece, which goes one way around or the other, doesn't actually matter. And that's followed by the 3D printed plate. So that will do up there with nuts and that should hopefully compress both our bearings together to get rid of the noise and make that really stable. And you'll notice I've left the same cutouts in both the gasket and the internal wheel here and um, also the gasket plate. And that means that I can take the two pieces of studding, which are these fixed ones, and if I wish I can run those all the way through the droid to the leg the other side and out the other side. So if I find that these aren't stable enough to hold the droid when it's upright, they're actually feeling okay. Um, then I can obviously brace that against the other side. Similarly, if I find there's too much play in the legs, I can take these three rotating bits of studding and run those all the way through um, and out the other side, so actually tying the two legs together. Uh, the plan isn't to do that at the moment, so I can keep the space in the middle for my centre foot mechanism, um, but if I really need to, I can try and reduce that mechanism and get the, the main legs tied together really well. 
So we'll put these nuts on, and then we'll give it a good shake, and hopefully we'll find that it's nice and noise-free and really stable. So I've done the nuts up on the back, and I've tensioned that, and I've just adjusted it so it's a nice, smooth turning piece. There we go, and also I've obviously compressed those bearings against each other, so there's a tiny bit of rattle, and may need some further tuning, but most of that horrible rattly sound from the bearings has gone, which is great. So what we really need to do is print the other side now, at least that piece, get that top ring back on. Uh, now, we've, now we know this mechanism is going to work okay, and then we'll uh, see how rigid it really is. So I think it's going to be extremely rigid once that's plugged in there. Um, that feels pretty good already. I think that's going to be perfectly good without running the studding through to the other side, but we've still got that option, as I say. So all of the frame is welded together. It's actually incredibly rigid. I've got the other side on there, so I've now attached my top ring. That's much, much more rigid than I thought it would be. It's extremely substantial, so it's going to be absolutely fine to drive around and convert into two-leg mode and back to three-leg mode again. So I've got one shoulder hub fitted so far. I haven't put the parts on for the other one, which are currently printing. Um, but before I fit the motor to motorise that, which is going to go somewhere at the back here, obviously we need a pair of them, I'm quite cautious that we need to preserve the space for the centre foot retracting mechanism. So obviously on this droid the centre foot is fixed, on this one it's actually going to get sucked up inside the body. So um, as well as having to fit that foot and its leg inside the body, we need to make sure that there's actually a piece on top of that, so when it's fully extended there's still something gripping a sliding rail or whatever uh, makes it slide out. So it's actually going to mean that um, when it's retracted it almost reaches the top of the droid. So that means it's going to come in between the two shoulder hubs. So we need to be quite careful it fits and then the motors aren't in the way. So the next thing is going to be doing a bit of design on that centre foot retracting mechanism. Then we can sort out putting all three motors on for the two shoulder hubs and that centre foot rail system. After quite a lot of thought, this is what I've come up with, which is this interesting box-looking section. Obviously this is made in multiple parts, and the multiple colours are there to distinguish between them, so they're going to be printed in very small parts and of course stuck back together. So again I'm using two 5mm sections stuck back to back, um, and basically this goes together, it locks together. So if we just go and hide this piece and this piece we can see that we've got a slot there and a corresponding slot in the pieces I've just hidden so they lock together and this is actually the carriage that's going to slide up and down some rails which are installed at the centre front and back of the frame and the holes in the ends of this thing are here to be bearing mounts so that I can put some rubber rollers in there so they're going to be hybrid prints of ABS and Ninja Flex so we've got a rubber coating to keep them quiet um, and make them fit really well so we'll have four rollers, and um, this thing is going to slide up and down vertically um, inside the droid. And the bottom section here where we've got these interesting curved pieces, are so that this homes properly into the square hole in the bottom of the droid where the centre foot comes out, or at least the one in the, um, the bottom section of the frame, not in the bottom of the skirt. So there's two pieces with a square hole, and this fits into the top one from the top down. So it'll slide down, and hopefully where these curves are, in all directions will mean it fits nicely in there and then obviously that means as long as it's held down it won't wobble around so this piece is actually going to sit squarely in that hole and hold the centre foot in place while it's driving along um, with only pressure from the top rather than having to rely on those rails to hold it perfectly square while it's driving along and going over bumps and lumps in the ground and so on so um, it probably make more sense if I print this thing out which is all going to be in small sections as I say and we'll get it printed and put together and hopefully it will plug right in the bottom there and then we can sort out the rollers and some rails So the first one is printed, I've stuck the two 5mm sections back to back to make one of the ends obviously those slots are for the longer pieces to go in and that should fit all the way down here and fit perfectly in there, which it does, so that's quite good. So obviously as long as I can push this down into here, these pieces fit nicely into that slot in that direction, which means that there'll be no wobble sideways. As long as I can keep this pushed into the bottom, it means the centre foot won't have any scope to move around because it'll be locked into the hole. So I need to get the rest of these printed till we've got the whole box section 
and that should sit nicely in there and we can mount the centre foot on it and then we'll have rails that run up the front and back of the frame for the wheels to run on so this should come to about this height and then we just need a way to uh, motorise it but all it needs to really do is push it up and down and be able to hold it into the bottom so that um, takes quite a lot of the engineering off actually holding it stable as well as motorising it Here's the completed piece for the centre foot mounting so it's the complete grid and we've got the obviously the eight now curved pieces that lock into the chassis so let's have a look at that Hopefully you can see this okay from there. So this is this seated right in the bottom there. So obviously this is going to raise up on a rail which will be back and front on rollers. And when it drops in it homes right in the bottom. Which means that it's incredibly stable front to back and left and right. There's a little bit of wobble but that's going to be fine. So obviously when that's pushed into the bottom here and the centre foot's mounted on it, it won't wobble around at all. So um, basically that's worked out quite well, it fits really well. So all I need to do now is put some rollers at the back and the front and I've got the bearing holes in here in this four of them, two at the back and two at the front to run on rails which I need to fit in here which are basically going to be very straight strips with a T-piece on. The first step is to design the roller and then we're going to design the rails and make them fit to the roller so everything's nice and tight. So the roller consists of this blue part which is going to be in rigid ABS and that's going to be a roller with straight edges and those are quite hard to print in one piece due to the overhang so I'm going to be printing that in two pieces and obviously there's a cap on the left there which plugs into the other part the red part there is Ninja Flex um, it's going to fit over the blue roller in between the two end caps um, and in fact what I'm going to do there is print that with no infill and no top and bottom layers and four vertical shells of extrusion so basically the printer is going to draw the four outside layers so it's uh, roughly two mil thick with a half mil nozzle but it's going to make it totally hollow due to the fact that I'm going to select no infill and no top and bottom layers so I'm hoping that that's going to fit fairly snugly over the um, blue part which is ABS and those are going to be printed separately. Now I could do a dual extruder print with these but it's going to be much cleaner not to. Um, they don't really need to grip, they just need to roll so there's no actual um, no motor driving this up and down. So for that reason I'm going to print them as separate parts and then slot the Ninja Flex part onto the ABS part and acetone weld the cap on and then this whole thing is going to rotate on two bearings in four places on that centre foot mechanism. I've got one printer here printing the rigid parts so that's printing my ABS roller and its end cap and then if we look over to the side here I've got the other Lowell Spot Taz with the Flexi Dually Drill Extruder and that is printing the Ninja Flex part and that's using this front Flexi Extruder which you can just see extruding there to print the part in Ninja Flex rubber that's coming off the bottom spool My rollers are installed on the carriage here, so I've got two at each end and those are mounted on 6mm bearings with a bit of studding. So this is fairly light because it's only 30% infill but it's got some uh, rigidity and it feels fairly robust. So these spin quite freely and this is going to run up and down on rails. So I've printed this part which is two pieces um, acetone welded together there so they're just butted up end to end and that's going to run on the rails or rather the uh, the carriage is going to run up and down on these, one at each end. And this is going to be held straight and attached to the frame with this piece, which is again two 5mm pieces back to back. And that's going to plug in like so, all the way down and be acetone welded in. And then the pair of those with these notches fit into the frame. So we've got the rails installed back and front here and our carriage runs up and down quite nicely. So. It rolls all the way down and fits squarely into that hole where it's really stable. So you can see there's some play in the rails um, on the way up and down. I could have made that slightly tighter, but when it's plugged into the centre centre hole there, then that's really stable. So that's going to work really well to make it stable for driving around on. So where we've got that centre rail that's now cutting through the middle of the frame there, that's going to be covered with the vents. So we've got the two front vents, the power coupler, and of course the utility arms and the large data slot which are basically going to cover that um, and obviously the other features in the frame. 
So even though you're going to be able to see this mechanism moving up and down inside, um, it's not going to look too unsightly and it's look, going to look quite interesting to look at. So that's actually all I'm going to do for this episode. Next time I'm going to get the motor in, which actually motorises the centre foot mechanism and the shoulders hopefully. So check back for updates in a few weeks time.